Man, y'all. All right, y'all. Get your get. Look, they trying to stop us. They trying to shut us down. They trying to hold us back. We back in this building, though. I'm gonna tell you, they can't stop them. Y'all know this is how you know it's the truth. This is how you know it's the truth, yo. I'm telling y'all, y'all know this is how y'all know it's the truth. Cause, uh, amen. I'm telling y'all it's the truth. What happened? They trying to shut your man down. They don't want me to tell the truth, but I'm gonna tell y'all the truth. If it even it, well, I ain't gonna say that. <laughs> I was about to say even if it, I ain't trying to. Y'all better stop five that, cameras? huh? They shut down five cameras, y'all. Five cameras. Five freaking cameras. They shut us down, but we coming back. We raw, you know. We got turn it down, turn it up. Uh, no, can y'all hear me? Are we good? Can you give me some audio? Can you hear me on the uh, podcast? All right, y'all. It's y'all, bam, back. It's your man, Mace Jackson, in the building. Take a moment, share the broadcast, share the broadcast, share the broadcast. We broadcasting live from the bunker in this building. You know what? They trying to stop us. They trying to hold me back. They don't want me to tell y'all the real truth. Let me tell y'all they don't want me to tell They don't want y'all, they don't want me to tell y'all the real truth. See, <clears throat> the real question is, See, I think that what people want you to do is they want you to see what they want you to see. You know how they say if you want to hide something from people, just put it in a book, make them read. Well, all you have to do if you really want to understand what happened is read the indictments. Read the indictments from page to page. See, the challenge the feds had was that they had everybody all caught up in one spot. You know how you've heard the, talk, the term fishing in a barrel? They had all the fish in one barrel. One barrel. So you got the lobbyists, you got the legislators, you got these mayors, and you got all of these political operatives, and they are all feeding off the carcass. Somebody's music is playing loud, and I keep hearing it. That's you. So, now they got everybody all in one spot. Everybody. All in one spot, they got them all. But how do you fish in the barrel as the feds if you want to get everybody and you don't want to know? Enter the federal informant and owner of Presidio Capital, who also happens to be a member of Safe Speed, a partner in Safe Speed. Now, how did he become a partner in Safe Speed? Remember the lawyer I told you about a while ago? We'll bring that back a little bit later. See, because the lawyer probably figured if my guy gets in there, then I don't need to be on the company. He can kick the money to me and I can make money off of everybody. But that's a whole nother story that I'll have to explain to you at a different day. So the feds with all of the fish in one barrel say, how do we fish in this barrel? And they think about this young man, businessman, who's been moving through the South, through the Western suburbs. He owns a cigar shop. Everybody, he's got hot cars, hot women moving around, and everybody thinks he's a young Italian mover and shaker. But little does he know, do people know he's moving just a little too fast. Ah, but the feds found out that he was moving just a little too fast. And once the feds find out you're moving a little too fast, guess what they do? They whistle you in. Now, again, this is all alleged. I'm not saying that this happened. I'm just saying I'm alleging that this is what happened. So now they bring in this man and they say, hey, buddy, you've been telling everybody you're Italian, but really you're, you're Saudi Arabian. Oh, what? 
So now he's probably thinking to himself, man, I've been telling all these Italians that I'm Italian and I ain't Italian. So he's already feeling a little nervous, right? Then they say, hey, we see you over here messing around with these federal housing dollars over in justice. What's going on with that? Then they look at him and say, boy, you probably don't, you, you, you're not built for prison. Can you help us? And at that point, he has to make a decision. Well, if you read the federal indictment, apparently his decision was to help the feds. And it started with Senator Marty Sandoval. You see, because remember how I told you everybody knew about Senator Sandoval? Everybody knew. And so they said, who could you bring us? Who could you get us? And, and as we saw, he went to Senator Sandoval. And so it began with a conversation, a wire, and an envelope. But none of it would have been possible without Marty and the mole. So you all tonight, we put our first two names on the board. The first is Senator Marty Sandoval. Uh, as we've seen, Senator Sandoval uh, has already pled guilty resigned from office and has agreed to cooperate forever. Forever. On every issue, on everything that he knows. Forever. And with that, he's still facing 10 years. Which means to me that it's going to be a lot of trouble. Right? We won't talk about those poor lobbyists that he worked with that pl plotted. However, I'm thinking that one of those lobbyists was already on the Fed team. That's how Senator Sandoval got how the whole why, why, how the whole mess got caught up. Then you've got the federal informant. Now people have been wondering, people have been speculating, who would the federal informant be? And I would have showed you a picture tonight. Unfortunately, the other Feds have shut down our ability to show the picture. However. I'll figure it out a little bit later how we're going to follow up fair for that. But would you like to know the name? How many people wants to know? You You, you can't bring it back up. You're not going to be able to bring it up on there because it's it's not connected to any of this at this point. So I am going to... Now, I'm going to tell you that the name of the federal informant has been... Or who, we, who I am alleging is the federal informant has been uttered before. But it wasn't convenient... It wasn't convenient for the press to tell that story. See, the press enjoyed telling the story of the black woman who had the corrupt red light camera company and that that was a nice, easy story that they could tell and would sell papers. But when you read the federal indictment, you come to find out that Safe Speed itself never gave a bribe. None of the money from the bribes that Senator Sandoval was taking from came from Safe Speed. But no, that no one wants to tell that story, but you got to read the indictment. Because in the indictment, it very clearly says that Senator Sandoval has to repay the federal government the $70,000 in cash payments that he took. Now, if he has to pay the federal government for the $70,000 in cash that he took, then it would suffice to say that that was the people's money, not the money from Safe Speed. Get it? See how that works? However, in the press, it would be much, much easier to say, ah, the company was involved in a scandal. Well, now, did you all see the, Sun the Tribune the other day? The Tribune, when I, the story that I told in Octo October 11th, in 2019, on February 11th, 2020, the Chicago Tribune then re-reported the story and still without the details that I gave you. Now, y'all, I'm going to tell you, this gentleman was a partner at Safe Speed. He was a partner at a multiple, he had a ton of LLCs and corporations, just by the way. 
that is a red flag for the feds because it means that you're probably trying to hide and shuffle a lot of money. So when they see you're opening up 20, 30, 40 different LLCs, then they figure that you're probably not reporting on all of those. So that's a red flag. But guys, the feds required that Sandoval pay back the $70,000. Now, here's can I help you all understand how this worked out perfectly? See, I've seen stories where the feds have gone as far as to go undercover, to set up fake companies, to do all types of things to catch you up. Well, how about if you didn't have to use a fake company, but you had a real company that had real business that they were already planning to shake down, and then you find someone in the company who got a federal case. Perfect time to get a snitch. Perfect time, because you know, You've been telling all the Italian guys that you was Italian, but you're really Saudi Arabia. Now you done got, and now you've been tied in with this lawyer in the South, in the West suburbs that introduced you to all these mayors that you've now taken down. You got a relationship with all of these lobbyists, one of which was already involved in a case in which it took down a whole administration. Y'all, and here we sit today, reading the Sun-Times and the Tribune, waiting for them to tell a story that they don't know. So I just decided that, I just decided that <clears throat> right here at the Intelligence Group, we're going to kick traditional media's ass. We're going to tell the story. Because remember, remember, every reporter is telling a story that someone else told them. Mm. I am telling you the stories that I have lived. See, y'all got to understand. The reason I could tell you the stuff that I'm telling you is because I lived it. What Jay say? You can't talk about it if you ain't live it, right? I lived it. See, like when you read these stories from these reporters, they're saying this was somebody heard. This can I tell y'all something? I'm going to take y'all a step further. Understand, I worked with the lobbyists at one point. I was involved in the meetings with Senator Sandoval. And I can't remember all of them, but let me tell you. In being in those meetings, there was always a plan for them to get rich. I have to tell y'all the story about the time that I went to a meeting with the senator, the lawyer, a black elected official who was running for mayor, and the son of the most powerful elected official in the state of Illinois, I went to that meeting, and it was that was when the meeting when I learned that black people ain't been playing the game. We don't even understand the game. See, I went to this meeting, and they offered me, they were like, Maze, we want to take over a town. We want to take over a municipality. And guess what? When we went to sit at the table, they had a big stack of paper. About this thick. Stack of papers this thick. All see how I mean papers, pages in there? It was this thick. And I remember looking at it and I was like, man, that show sure is a big old stack of papers. And you know what they said? They said, This is all the contracts for this municipality. And let me show you how they what they did. They took this big stack and they did just like this. And they ripped it. And they took it. And they threw it to one of their partners. And said, you see this? Every contract in this, you're in control of. Then they took another stack and they ripped it. And they said, you see this? All these contracts in this, they're yours. And then they took one more and they ripped it. And they said, this stack is yours. Then they turned to the two black guys in the room, me being one of them, and said, Mr. Jackson, if you help us with this, we'll hire you for $15,000 a month. $15,000 a month? And the person that they were going to make the mayor, well, he just got a salary. He was black. But when they split up those contracts... It was the fire, the police, 
the ambulance, the garbage pickup, every single thing. And we weren't even in the game. See, in Illinois, you have to understand that there is a process in which most elected officials look at people in trouble as an opportunity to make money. And then what they do is, and I'm going to give you a perfect case example. Remember how Susanna Mendoza got up and did all of those press conferences talking about how terrible the red light camera companies were. And then she named the company and said, oh, it was safe speed and blah, 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 blah. And she stood in Chicago. Did you realize that not one of those cameras in Chicago was black owned by the company that she attacked, but because she had a relationship, because she had a relationship with lobbyists, she was creating her own Fetcher bill. See, but they just, she did it in a slick way. See, y'all, uh, what I need for you to understand is that there is a different game that is being played. What I want you to understand is the story that I told you tonight about the Fetcher bill, about the controversial company. Pay attention. Pay attention to the companies that you see under this. So pay attention to the companies that are in the news right now. Look at the red light camera company, Safe Speed. Look at the sweepstakes industry. Look at gaming. Look at gambling. Look at cannabis. Look at all the things where it's a controversial business. And so lobbyists are set up to make economic money. The lobbyists then go into the companies and then, then extract campaign contributions. Now, and then they save the companies. And then if the company gets in too much trouble, after they've bled the company, then somebody on the way out then decides to pass a law to attack the company after they did everything that the legislators and the lobbyists told them to do. So after Safe Speed gave Marty Sandoval at campaign contributions, this is all separate from the federal mole. Who, are y'all still waiting to find out who the mole is? Yeah. Ha! <laughs> See how I'm stretching it out? So, Sandoval was taking women back up. The process is set up for elected officials to take advantage. And then once it's all done, then guess what they do? Then they make money on kicking the company's ass on the way out the door. So, here you go. You got this poor company that was the victim of a Fetcher bill. The Fetcher bill then created a scenario where the lobbyists were able to go into the company, rape, rob, and pillage it, create these contracts that are they are now under scrutiny for, that elected officials signed off that they knew were happening and allowed to happen. And then when it became public knowledge, all everybody ran away from them and acted like they didn't know what was going on when they all set the process up to take money from them. So when you look at Susanna Mendoza and she took $16,500 from this red light camera company and refused to give it back even after she denounced the company, then you got to say to yourself, how genuine is it? It's a racket. It is a racket set up to rape, rob, and pillage companies, legitimate companies who do controversial business. But it doesn't work. Now, and I want to be clear. There are real lobbyists and real legislators every day that propose laws that fight, that do. I am a lobbyist. I lobby every single day. And uh, probably because I do these type of things, it's probably why my client list is so small. Right? Because I tell the truth. But I don't set my clients up to be built. Now, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give you a real quick example. How many of y'all remember when we were trying to pass electric cars in the state of Illinois, and then all of a sudden there was a $2,500 tax placed on the electric cars? Guess who proposed the $2,500 tax on the electric cars? Senator Sandoval. What was he doing? Fetching the largest companies in the world. Because who's the best, the highest value company in the world right now? Second, Tesla. And Tesla was going to do 
multiple com was going to bring electric cars to come to Chicago. And so he decides that he's going to propose a bill that says that even though the car is more efficient, I'm going to charge $2,500 in taxes on it. What does that mean? That means that every car company in the country that is now moving towards electric vehicles has to do what if they want to do something in Illinois? Come see him. And guess what? Guess what? Then they'll run into who? A lobbyist? Probably his lobbyist. Who will then say, we can help you, but here's what we need you to do. See how that works? Now, I'm going to tell you, here's the thing. Senator Sandoval is not... Senator Sandoval did this in a very unsophisticated way. But what you are watching is wash, rinse, and repeat. Look at Ed Burke. Ed Burke took a controversial Indian-owned company from Texas, who cares about somebody from Texas, and told them that if they didn't do what he wanted for a little driveway, he could bring a multi-billion dollar hedge fund to his knees. Same thing with Speaker Madigan. It would be the same. You're in, you own a large piece of commercial property in the city of Chicago, and all of a sudden, you get a phone call that says that they're planning on taxing buildings 1,500 times more if you are over, over a certain amount. And what do you do? Oh my God, I need a lobbyist. And guess what the lobbyist says? You need a lobbyist, but what you really need is a property tax appeal lawyer. Who's the property tax appeal lawyer? See how it works? Did y'all learn something today? Did y'all learn something? Okay. Well, I'm going to wrap this up because, you know, I'm, they probably working right now to shut this bad boy down again. So, when you actually read the indictment, I think what you'll learn is that the press failed us in telling this story. The federal government used safe speed because it was the perfect target, it was the perfect company. What did they have? They were a company that did very well economically. They were controversial. Now, just think about this. And now the, the argument has moved to we now want to put more cops on the streets to write red light ticket cameras instead. Now, I'm just going to say as a black person, I would much rather get the red light ticket mm -hmm. camera going through the intersection than being pulled over by the police officer. The world is moving to automated technology, right? What you are finding and what we are seeing right now. And so it, and at the end of the process, after, after they have milked everything that they can get from the company, then guess what they do? Then they have a legislator who comes from the other side and passes a bill to say, we got to ban that bad company, even though the only people who did wrong were the legislators. They took the bribes, but they want to legislate the company out of business. See how that works? Y'all, I am going to now tell you what the press won't. Uh, approximately two weeks ago, and again, I don't know if you saw this in the paper, even though the press read, Safe Speed terminated their relationship with a board member. There was a letter. I have actually a copy of the letter. I snuck a piece of I snuck it. I go, don't tell nobody. I'll be taking the book to me. Anyway, I will allege today, so we've put one name on the board, right? The first name we've put on is who? Senator Marty Sandoval. I am going to allege today that the federal informant that will be responsible for the destruction of the Illinois Minati in the western suburbs name is... Now what if I push the button and turn it off? You know what? Maybe y'all should tune into the actual podcast to get the real name. Maybe. You know what? 
maybe we should save the name for the Illinois Minati podcast. Because I think y'all watching, but y'all ain't been listening. Y'all ain't listening. Y'all ain't paying attention. Y'all don't even want to know. You know what I think? So, if you want to know the name of the federal informant, tune in to the Illinois Minati podcast. You got to listen to the podcast. All right, y'all. So, I got a few questions as we walk out. Why? First question is why. Why would the federal government use a company like SafeSpy? Well, I get it because they're a controversial company and they fit the bill. But why did they let it go on so long? So they collected almost a year's worth of, caught him up for a year. He was taking bribes for almost a year. That in a process, remember in the Bogoyevich era when they said they had to stop it right away because he was going to do something bad? Realize that, the, that, that Sandoval has been involved in every piece of legislative transportation legislation from top to bottom. So does that mean that every vote that he has taken has been tainted? How many bribes from other companies that they weren't following happened? Who else were the accomplices? Why haven't we seen any indictments or any information on the lobbyists? The question I asked, we've seen the lobbyists. The Sun to, I, po I pointed out who the lobbyists were um, a little bit over a year ago, and we did a lot about it. But it's interesting to me to see that for the first time, the Tribune finally posted, although we've heard some of the lobbyists on the phone uh, extorting aldermen for business. Um, with that in mind, Jado, that is the end of episode one, Marty and the Mole. If you want to know who the Mole is, if you want to know who the Mole is, you're going to have to check out the audio version of the podcast that stated uh i am your host Maze jackson of the illinois minati podcast i apologize for some of the technical difficulties but i think we worked it out all things considered and especially knowing that the federal government probably shut us down i don't want no problems though just for the record i don't want no problems from the feds that stated though I will take a few minutes to take a few questions, a few questions. Hey, guys, and also, just so you know, once we get everything up and running, we actually have the ability to take phone calls. So we'll be able to take phone calls from our new app, uh, from our new studio equipment. We can actually dial people in, et cetera. Uh, but I'll take some, uh, I'll take some questions. I'll take some questions. Y'all got questions? Oh, but I'm not going to tell you who the, who the, the, uh, I'm not going to tell you who the federal informant is, but you can, you can, you can get it from the podcast. If you want to know how to get the podcast, you don't have to ask Antonio, uh, but she's got that all taken care of. We got it all digital. Sonia is over here saying, save it for the podcast because we got to make it exclusive. Look at Greg's will. Everybody's in suspense. Sorry. <laughs> look at, look, I, who is the mole? You want to know who the mole is? Who is the mole? Look, I'm getting texts. They're saying, who is the mole? Everybody wants to know who the mole is. If you want to know who the mole is, stay tuned. But I'll tell you what, the mole, the mole will be revealed. You know what? You got a week. You got a week until next week. The role, the mole will be revealed and we'll have a picture as well. Now, I'm going to tell you, if I, I the, the feds have been working us down really hard, but the mole... The mole, the mole. You know what? I might hide a picture of the mole somewhere on my Facebook page. Like, I might hide them. You know what? Maybe I'll hide the mole on the morning show. Look. Any questions? Look. Look. Somebody. Why are y'all texting me? Look. I got. Oh, my goodness. We, I got some big willies watching, y'all. So, let me tell y'all. You got some powerful people watching. Look. They, they want to stop us. We are broadcasting from the bunker. We are broadcasting live from the bunker. Todd Stroger is not the mole. <laughs> Todd Stroger is not the mole. Can I say what's up to everybody who is out here watching? Um, hey, y'all, and I, I need y'all to understand something right real quick. Um, we cannot be going for the easy, easy, easy takedown of black folks when we know what time it is. Uh, how much do we get? Ah, uh, y'all wanna y'all wanna find? You know what? I'm gonna hide pictures of the mole. 
Can you please read the email about the MWRD race? Uh, look, y'all want me, y'all want all the dirt. Y'all want all the tea. No, y'all can't get all the tea. You want to know, then you got to tune in. And if you don't listen to the WVON Morning Show, but can I tell y'all what? Do you feel, do you feel like you understand more? Like, did I understand, did I explain the fetcher? bill well enough for the people to understand does do people get how this process works now i'm gonna tell you so now what i want you to think about every time you hear somebody come up with some outrageous ass law that makes absolutely no sense think about the fetcher bill and think about with every situation with every single crisis elected officials look to make money or publicity off of them right money or publicity and it works best when the company is controversial when people not that they're wrong not that they're illegal but that they are controversial now i would tell you that as a black man in america give me a red light ticket before you give me a cop any day to pull me over because can i tell you what for me saving my heartbeat from that, but that's neither here nor there. The fact of the matter is we cannot be black lollipops. No black ass lollipops. Look through it. So when you see somebody saying crazy stuff, you gotta that's why we had Camille Lily on today. Cause when I heard she was trying to ban, and you gotta ask yourself, and if they're not willing to answer it, then you gotta challenge. Okay, everybody's telling me I gotta go. One more thing. This fetcher bill process. This fetcher bill process is the process in which Illinois legislators are able to run businesses out of this state. When they look at everything as an opportunity to make money, when you go to your elected officials, you go there for help. And they look at you and imagine, you know, it's almost like pimpery. You go to get help, you think they feed you, they take care of you, they rub you on the head. Next thing you know, they got you on your knees somewhere in the corner working three times a day. Hey, y'all, it's time for us to take rip the skirt off all of them. Let's, ooh, I guess I can't say that because that'll make me a me too. Hey, y'all, this is your man, Maze Jackson. I want to thank my production crew for being here with me today. My man, G Reg, in the building. I got my girl, Sonia Escobar, the musical conductor, who has now turned into the uh, audio producer, and my man, Big Swill. Happy to have him back on the team. It's like the band is back together. Um, let me tell you what. Y'all, I'm going to keep telling the truth until they stop me from telling the truth. Um, but no black lollipops, no black lollipops. This is Illinois Minotti. Now I'm gonna give you all the opportunity to tell me next week, who do you, what, which, you know what? Maybe I'll let you vote. You want to know about the lobbyists? How, who you want me to talk? Which part of this story do you want to be elaborated on? Uh, you know what? We'll talk about it during the week. All right. But for now, I'm your man, Maze Jackson signing out. Uh, you know, this, I would say every day. You know, I, I got to get an exit for this. So I don't have an exit for this yet. But it is the Illinois Minotti Podcast. Uh, inside Illinois' most secret society, politics. Man. All right, y'all. We up out of here. Peace.